So in order to create our star field, all we need quite literally is Photoshop. We can build all of this from scratch. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to go to the far menu and choose new. And from the list of presets in here, I'm going to go to the web preset because I want to create a, a generous web sized image in here. So I'm going to click on web large 1920 by 1080 pixels. And in here, where it's untitled, I'm going to call that starry. And I'm going to leave the size as it is. I don't need this to be artboards. I just intend to create one RGB image for our star field. But I will change the background from white to black because, of course, this is the vast void of space and the darkness. So black is appropriate. I'm going to click on create. I'm going to zoom in a touch to make sure that's a little bit larger. Uh, and then from here in the layers panel, you notice that we have just one layer in there that's called background. So I am going to utilize that as the basis for our stars. So I'm going to create um, several stages to this tutorial. And if all you want is just a simple kind of star field and then throw some text and things over the top of it, then it'll be the first part of the tutorial. Afterwards, I'm going to make some large stars and then um, we'll create a nebula as well and a, and a kind of a glowing starburst effect at the end. So if this is all you want, a simple star field, then we'll go to filter, go down to noise and then we'll choose add noise. Now this will vary in size when you come to the dialog box. So it may well be that this is set to um, monochrome is what we need. So we need to make all make sure all the grain in here is, is grayscale. We don't want any color at the moment. Gaussian because um, we want this to be slightly more random rather than more a uniform style of grain in there, which um, this will be more uniform. So it needs to be Gaussian. And the amount in here, this is way too high. So I'm gonna drag this right down in here somewhere to about between sort of 25 and 30 percent in there this will give us plenty of uh, white for stars in the background i know there's a lot of white in there but we're going to reduce that afterwards so i'll go up to the top now i've got that mount right and then click ok and um, we're actually going to create for the second part of the tutorial larger stars so i'm going to duplicate this here i'm going to click on the padlock to unlock the layer change the name of this and call this um, small stars and then I'm going to press on the keyboard Command and J or Control J on a PC that create a duplicate of the uh, of the existing layer, and that appears above. I'm going to call that one Big Stars, um, but Temp next to that because we are going to delete that eventually. And I'm going to hide that, and then left click back on the original layer called Small Stars. From here we need to blur these ever so slightly. So I'm going to go to the filter menu, go down to Blur, and then choose Gaussian Gaussian Blur, whichever you prefer. And with this one, we need to make this not quite as blurred as this. The radius, the, the amount of pixels over which it will blur them, really, really low in this case. We don't want to lose our stars to, to a blurriness, but we do need to soften them ever so slightly to get the right end result. So just by softening them, it makes them a little bit more apparent. And then with that, I'll click OK. And the next step I'm going to make is a, is a permanent destructive edit to this layer, which I wouldn't normally do, but in this case, I'm fine, I don't intend to go back and change these stars. So adjustments and then choose levels because levels is really good in here. It's showing you the, the white graph in here is where all the color of the image is. So dark shadowy stuff is down at the left hand side. There's a lot of black in the image, of course. There's only a tiny little bit of white in there, which is and highlights for your images um, over on the right hand side. And what we can do then is take the black slider, which determines where anything is to the left of that is pure black. So if I drag that slider towards the middle, you'll start to see we lose some of those stars. So now anything that was kind of a pale white has been turned to solid black and it's disappeared. I can then go to the far right hand side, drag the white point slider, pull it towards the middle and you'll see now that does the opposite, it intensifies the lighter colors in the image. So anything to the right hand side of this white stop in here will become um, pure white. And it's a case of just pulling them closer to one another and getting the amount of stars that you need in there. So I'm gonna get a star field that is well, not packed, but we want, you know, something a kind of an, an entertaining and visually intriguing amount of stars in our night sky. Uh, so with that there, um, I'm fairly happy. I've got my black point set to 86, just for reference. And then my white point I've pulled into the middle to 116. And to give you a sense of the scale of this, this goes from zero to 255. So with that done, I'll then click OK. So those are our small stars, folks, for our background. If, if that is all you want, and then just a star background, then that quite simply is all you have to do. Uh, build a new file, put the background color to be black, add some noise, blur them ever so slightly, go to adjustments um, and levels, and then um, pull the black and the white points towards the middle to intensify both of those regions of the image, the dark bits and the light bits. If you want to have 
a little bit more complexity and visual interest, then we could go for big stars in the foreground. So with that done, I'm going to go and, and turn on the visibility for our big stars um, and make sure that layer is active. And then going to blur these. So I'm going to go to the filter menu, go down to uh, blur, and then choose Gaussian blur again. And then this time I'm going to increase that value. So I'm going to go to not too high, 1.2 in there, just to soften those a little bit, and then click OK. Again, it's a permanent edit because we're working in that layer in the list that called Big Stars. And then we need to intensify them again. So I'm going to go to the Image menu, go to Adjustments, then go to Levels, and repeat the same process. So when I pull this in here, you might find that because I've made those stars a little more blurred in there, when I pull the white point in here, you'll probably find they are clustered around this sort of close to the side in here. So it's a case of we want less stars, but we want them to be bigger. So a little bit of back and forth between the black and the white point in there to get the sizes that we're looking for. And I say we're getting there about in the right region. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I think if I pull them any closer together, I'm, I'm going to lose them. You might find that if you've got too many stars, you have to pull the white point back over to the left hand side, pull the black point in a bit and then pull the black the white point back in closer to the black point in there. So I think with that, we got a decent amount of large stars in there. And with that done, um, before I click OK, just for reference, my black point was set to 51 and my white point in there is set to 57. And then I'll click OK. So that's our large stars. We need to mix these now, where the small stars and the big stars. In order to do that, we need to remove the black background. And the quickest way to do that is to actually select the light bits in the image. You can go to the channels panel and then with all the channels active, you can actually load those channels as a selection. So if I go down here and it'll read in tooltip in here, uh, load channel as a selection. When I click on that, it loads. You might not be able to spot this, but if I here, you can see these little marching ants dance around just the white pixels in that layer. I'll go back to layers. Now we don't need this anymore. So I am actually going to drag that down to the trash can to delete it. And it'll leave my selection in place. And with that selection active, I'll go down to the adjustments button here at the bottom of the layers panel and choose solid color and make sure that is uh, set to if i show you that here in red to the top see that that's our selection but it obviously needs to be bright white for our stars um and there we go so just for reference rgb in that is 255 for all of those and the hex field is all f's six f's in there for white i'll click ok and there we go we have our big stars in that i will rename that and i'll call that uh, big stars and we've got small stars. That's all looking good. Um, and then we need to add a glow. And it's another reason why I had to re remove the black background because if you put a glow around something, that quite literally is how it works. You have to put a glow around an element. Now, if it had a completely solid background, you would not see that glow appear around the stars because it would be trying to put it around the edge of the layer in there. So we now are in a position where we've got individual stars on a layer. So with the layer, big stars active, I'll go down to the bottom to the FX icon and then choose Outer Glow. And then from here, it will remember whatever was in this dialog box last. So opacity, I do want to make sure that they are nice and clear. So the opacity value is set right up to 100. It will be set lower than this. But just so we can see that and the preview in there nice and clearly, I'll click in the color box for the color of the glow. Make sure that's set to uh, pure white in there, which again is 255 for RGB. And I'll click OK. And then it really is about the size in there. So. If I change the size, make them smaller, you'll see that they are really bright in there. We want a glow around them, so just varying that a little bit. I'm just looking partly at the preview in this dialog box, but the real indicator is the, the effect it's given us around those stars in there. So if I make the size of that blur bigger, it'll become softer and we'll lose it. So you will have to just test this out a little bit. I do want a slight glow around these, but not too intense. So I'm going to go down here to about 13 pixels that looks like it's working if i turn the preview checkbox off that was before and that's after so a very faint glow around those opacity again i'm going to reduce this a little bit um down to sort of 70 to 75 and then i'll click ok so we get our big stars with a slight glow around them now that is a layer adjustment so you might find that when we add things like the nebula those effects might become really intense we can always go back and we can reduce the outer glow in there so we've got our big and small star field. What's really lacking is that a night sky has different colored stars. So there's no point painting them. You can remedy that with the similar kind of feature we've looked at. So I'm going to do that by going down to the bottom, creating a brand new empty layer. I'm going to call this star colors. And then in brackets here, I'm going to 
I'm going to write in the blend mode as well. So that's going to be color, quite simply. And then press return, ultimately. So I'm going to leave it as it is at the moment. Um, and then I'm going to go and choose um, to fill that with black. So edit and then choose fill. And set that to black for the background. And of course, that's completely solid. Go to the filter menu. Go back down to noise. Choose add noise. This time, make it really large. So, you know, somewhere between sort of three, four hundred percent inside of there. Like so. And this time I'm going to leave it set to Gaussian, but I am going to turn off monochromatic so we get different colored grain in there. And that will recolor the stars in each of those regions to be different colors. It's a nice, simple solution. So with that uh, done, I'll click OK. Uh, we will need to blur these. So I'm going to go to the filter menu again, as you probably are now aware. Blur. Gaussian blur. And then I'm going to increase that quite high. So maybe around about four. From where it's been. Yeah, I think about 4% in there, 4%, 4 pixels, and then click OK. Now, obviously, we can't see any of our stars. We've got this very murky looking blurred layer. But if I do, um, as we've suggested here, set the blend mode to be color. Go down the list in here. Go down to color. There we have it. So we have different regions. These stars will now be recolored reds and yellows. If I turn the layer visibility off, that was before. Turn it back on again. We now have the colors in there. So it's subtle, but it does make a difference if you want to have different colored stars. So there we go. That is our star field complete. So if you want a more interesting star field, that really is the end of it. But we can do more folks. Yes, we're going to create a nebula. So I'm going to make sure that I've got my top layer active in here. Hold down the shift key, shift and left click on small stars to make them all active. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom and click on add layer group. And it puts all those layers into a group, which I'm going to call stars and press return. Then I'm going to right click on the layer visibility and then color code those yellow. And then everything related to stars will be color code yellow in there. I know it's geeky. I don't go out with my friends at the weekend. I color code layers and things because it makes me happy. I have problems. Um, I will then go back and collapse that in there. So that is just simplifying things. Now, the next step is to add um, we need to create the, the clouds for the nebula. So that's easily sorted. I can go down to the bottom, click in the new layer icon in there. I'm going to call that clouds. And then in brackets, I'm going to change that to color dodge. Ooh, I put a zero in there. Color dodge. Like so. That will be the blending mode. So now to show you what clouds look like, um, you can have an empty layer, um, but we do need to make sure it creates clouds of whatever color is in your tools panel in here at the bottom. So if I tap the D key, D for defaults, it sets those to be black and white. That's what we need. And then I'm going to go to filter, go down to render, and then I'm going to get Photoshop to render some clouds. And there we go. So it uses the, the foreground and the background color from the bottom of the tools panel to create that kind of cloud effect in there. So that works well, except we can't see our, it looks like we're now looking on a really dark, foggy night. So in order to change that, we do, of course, need to change the blending mode from normal and down to color dodge in there. And this is what I was talking about. Once we've had this nebula layer in here, where we intensify some of these colors, we might find that actually things like the color of those stars and the, the gl outer glowing effect might be a little bit too intense. So before we move on, I'm going to go back, expand that open. If I want to just re reduce the amount of color, I can always click on the star colors layer, go to the opacity and reduce that back a little bit. Just take some of the color out of there. Uh, I want to drop the, I think around about, yeah, sort of 60%. That's fine. I've got an, a decent amount of color in there. And then I'll click away from that pop up menu for the opacity and then go back to big stars. Because remember, we put an outer glow on there. Double left click on outer glow. And then with this preview on screen here now, what we can do is we can just increase the size maybe little bit to make them a little bit more softer and then just reduce the opacity a bit as well in there like so. So there we go. Um, that has kind of just tempered those ever so slightly. I'll then go up to the top, click OK. And now we're done with the stars really for now. I can collapse those and I don't have to focus on them. Now we need one more layer. We need to actually paint a nebula through the clouds. So it requires us to create a brand new layer. And then I'm going to double click on there and I'm going to call that um, cloud color um, that's actually going to be left to a normal blending mode in here so with that active um, I can then go to my brush tool I can tap the B key in the keyboard to get to the brush tool just here go up to the top we need a really big brush in this case so I'm going to set this to be 600 for the size it does need to be a soft round brush so if you're looking for your brushes look under general brushes 
soft round, and then the hardness needs to be uh, set to zero and a big brush size. Press return, opacity needs to be set really low in here. So 10% is actually good in here. Um, and then take a look at the brush size, super big. Now we have to paint with a color in here. I'm gonna paint with black. We're not gonna really see this effect. So I have in my swatches panel earlier, I added two colors, got this deep blue in here and we've got this kind of like um, kind of off sort of pinky color in there. So I'm gonna hover over first of all and click on the, uh, on the blue. Now to show you the colors of that, obviously we've got the RGB, but if I click in the color box, um, the RGB is 37, 83, 139. And it's got a hex of 25538B. When I click OK, I can paint with that. So I'm going to left click. And there we go. All I'm doing is I'm just painting soft round brush strokes, but it's the layer above, the one called clouds, where it's showing through the lighter regions of that cloud effect. That's where our uh, nebula is appearing from inside of there. So I'm literally just left clicking with the mouse and letting go and moving to another region and left clicking and letting go. If you click and hold down the mouse, you may well find you get really bright spots in your nebula in here so uh yeah i'm just filling this out a touch in here a bit more blue and then i want to switch it up a little bit and then pick a different color so i'm going to go and then click in the other color in here and that one and again showing the color picker that's set to an rgb of 180 132 189 with a hex of b 484 bd click ok and then i will run this through the middle now i'm going to make the brush size smaller in here so i'm going to go up to the top and just make that touch smaller. Of course, if I hit the return key, you can use the left and right square bracket keys. Left uh, bracket key to make it smaller, right bracket key to make it bigger. That's next to P key on the keyboard. And then I can set to about this size. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And just run that through the middle in here, like so. Now you'll, you'll find that the way that all these effects work, they are generated sort of semi-randomly, really. And you'll find that your nebula will probably look different to mine. In fact, it's almost certain that your nebula will look different. Um, so I can reduce the size of it. I can paint in a particular region just to focus in there and put more color if I wanted to. You could, of course, pick any colors that you wanted to. You could put greens in there. But for now, I think I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. I might just switch back to the blue, make the brush size bigger, and then just put a bit more blue out into this region here down there because it's looking a bit like a band of color in there. Like so. So that's how we get our nebula. Um, if you then wanted to take this a little bit further, we could add a starburst effect. So we're a large focal point of a star. In order to do that, then I'll click on the top layer, go down to the bottom, click in there. I'm going to call this one starburst. Press return. And with that layer active, I'm going to fill that again with black. So edit and then choose um, fill. Again, that's it, the black, click OK, fill with black, but this time I'm going to change the blending mode to screen, which makes anything that's dark. So in terms of a range from pure black to white, halfway um, between black and white, that's your cutoff point, really. Any of those colors start to fade the darker colors and it keeps lighter colors visible. And that's why screen is used here, because we're going to put a nice bright star in that layer and the black background is required because Photoshop needs you to add a lens flare into a layer with pixels. Now, if you were just to add it in here, we'd be stuck with it where it is. We want to move it around and put in a clouds layer, so it's in a dedicated layer of its own. And then from here then, um, well, I'm gonna go up to the filter menu, go down to render, and then choose lens flare. I'm gonna go for, I think I'm gonna go for a 35 millimeter one in there, prime. I'm gonna reduce the brightness in there a little bit. I want to get to where we've got this lovely point in there in the middle. Now, it may well be that your lens flare starts up here. You can actually drag it around, and this is showing the whole canvas. You can drag that around in there, and you get this angular lens flare effect where actually the light does pass through the lens of a fictitious camera. We don't want that effect in this case. We want to create what looks like a bright star in the foreground. So I want that to be positioned pretty much right in the middle, to be honest. So I get that as a square on bright light effect in there. I'm going to reduce that again just a touch. And then with that done, I'll click OK. And then go to, say, Edit and choose uh, Free Transform. And then hold down the Alt key and Alt click and drag to scale that down and make it a touch smaller in there. Like so say so touch smaller, it's considerably smaller, and then click on the tick to apply that. And then you'll notice there it is, it's just stuck in a layer of its own, so I can now drag and move it around wherever I need to. I can have a star effect in here, in my nebula, with a focal point in there. And that is how you can create a star field and a nebula 
and a starburst effect inside of Photoshop complete from scratch without anything but what Photoshop offers for you folks. This file is available to download from the show notes at the bottom of this page. Feel free to, you can use it to compare to your file, uh, jog your memory about how the file has been constructed. And um, if you do have a go at creating this star field, then let me know how it gets on. You know, leave a comment in the show notes. Always love to hear from people when they've had a go at one of the tutorials. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, folks. It does support the channel and helps reach other people on YouTube to share the Adobe insight and knowledge. You can always subscribe to the channel and the little bell next to subscribe. If you click on that, it will alert you every time a new video is posted on this channel, which is generally every Friday, uh, 12.30 GMT. Until next time, folks, farewell.